okay this this entire drill takes uh, the statistics take six hours then we have pandas so effectively this take totally around eight hours okay so it includes understanding visualization library like matplotlib okay it includes uh, data analyzing data processing libraries like pandas also we will understand here what is various type of distribution what is probability okay what is uh, calculus we will separate up different from this what, what the basic calculus that is required to understand this also uh, we will understand there how to uh, do various data processing cleaning munging right given a data given like you know today's class uh, so today's class what we are doing we have this income data based on that you are showing gender wise distribution of income you are showing location wise distribution of income understanding this data these are all skills that you learn in this phase statistics using pandas and math okay this is the data analysis part of it okay here you learn about explorative data analysis eda that is what you call explorative data analysis trying to understand what is this data trying to tell you okay you understand things like correlation and cost correlation and uh, covariance correlation and covariance okay you learn here probability you learn here distribution okay you you learn here uh well you you learn here hypothesis testing okay. these are the major things that you learn in the stocks okay now comes okay pause this you get into this machine learning part okay machine learning part you understand uh, this pre calculus is required to understand this okay you need linear algebra okay you need matrix um, basically let's get covered here matrix operations right. after that we start with these are the maths for machine learning Okay, machine learning. So here we understand first topic is linear regression. Okay, logistic regression. So what what happens in your linear regression? Uh, yeah. So linear regression is a big topic actually. It's very important to understand linear regression because this is a thirty years old technique and this is still very popular. Okay. So there is a lot of math. These three are the components that is required here to understand linear regression. Here we'll understand regularization and some more topics around it. Okay, polynomial. So those are the major ch chunks. There are a lot of internal details here. Then we'll understand naive base. This is the Bayesian methods. Again, few techniques are there. Then you have decision tree. Okay. Then you have ensemble methods. Okay. So this also has. I mean, I'm writing a very uh, broader category and simple methods has random forest voting classifier it has a ada boost xg boost all this five six techniques and decision trees so after that nearest neighbors okay okay so these are the algorithmic part of it okay nearest neighbors then you have sdm okay, machines okay 
then uh, there is another topic of pre-processing feature selection right you might have heard about our feature selection and how do you choose important features from the data right that is your feature selection topic right so data processing pre-processing what is data pre-processing data pre-processing is getting the data ready so that you can your machine learning algorithm can give you good results that is data pre-processing so you have to know which pre-processing technique is required so that your algorithm gives you better results okay uh, feature selection and extraction so here eca comes under here okay so then you have uh, code around uh, another like pipeline okay you have feature union you have uh, uh, validation okay so all these things are uh accuracy okay so yeah in a, in a nutshell these all topics will be discussed okay so the above stuff takes around uh, say 12 hours this takes around 30 hours so it will take around 40 hours. any questions anybody has regarding topics or whether or anybody anything additional you want Yeah, first of all, what you are saying is uh, all of the uh, all of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, it might be as of now. But you know, in the beginning, if you have the entire picture, if you are noted down somewhere, as you are coming for the class, you might have this idea. Okay, this will be discussed. Okay, and I I put this up upfront because you know when you are at beginning, a lot of people come here after finishing Coursera or Udemy or Udacity from all these courses, right? they have certain uh, frame of mind okay this is what will be discussed or maybe they sometimes add two topics so i'm just telling up front that you know i'm open to that okay but of course to extent okay so just putting it everything so if you have noted it down somewhere you know, you know this is the sort of plan and uh, you you're just mentally ready for it so okay and the important part of mentioning the maths before it is that, you know if you have time i would highly encourage you to read it you know where where i'll show you the know where you should be targeting it it's really easy and i'll be discussing them but if you have time because anyway you're learning it for yourself right so if you have that you can spend that some time doing that as well so because this is i will never say that this is 100% of the course okay so of course uh, here we deal with you know how to do how to deal with outliers that is one topic outliers and imbalance data Okay, some topics order may change. Uh, okay, so outliers and unbalanced data. So this is this is another one. How do you deal with different uh, outliers <coughs> or unbalanced data? So that's that's around the rough diagram. Please feel free to if you have any more ideas around it, you can try uh, problem. So and in the projects part, we'll be dealing with text. We'll be dealing with images. We'll be dealing dealing with uh, you know financial data. We'll be dealing with uh, HR data. We'll be dealing with uh, review comments. Okay. Uh, we'll be dealing with uh, must have anybody from finance background. Anybody? We might have heard this credit risk. We'll be doing those credit risk projects, right? Uh, we'll be doing predicting which employees will be putting the organization. Uh, image classifier. How to create an image classifier? Right. Uh, okay. How to deal with text? Uh, sorry, Avanti. Yeah, yeah. Avanti, have you uh, talked about how to download the screen you're working on and how to download the Anaconda and everything? uh yeah i just showed it okay uh that how to do it. at the end of the class just uh, tell me again because i was not present acha acha i just uh, i did it it's, so just go here in anaconda download anaconda download okay okay and here here you have this window click on this uh, based on your os just click on this you'll okay. to this page click on this download that's all okay next next and it will install okay that's it that's it that's it okay. 
So that's that's the whole plan. Okay, let's get started with our first item in the list. That is. Our program. Yeah, it's there and it's coming. Out of this no, 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 no. This is totally different vertical. Okay, this is. I mean, I think uh, I generally Amitesh does this cross validation, cross check, so that everybody is comfortable with Python right here. Yeah. Okay, so this course will be dealing only with uh, data science with Python, basically. R. I mean, once you know the concept, you can very easily learn how to do that in R. But that becomes a different journey. Before getting to numpies, can we have some background of data science? What it is and all that. What it is and where we are progressing to. Oh, I, I stopped doing this sometime because nowadays everybody is aware. But from a bit of over. Ah, right, right, right. right. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, feel free to. I mean, the reason why you are coming here is basically to ask question. I highly encourage that. Feel free to ask. Make it more interactive. Uh, whatever doubts is in your mind, it might so happen you are thinking that no, it might not be a good thing to ask. Trust me, that will be there in everybody's mind. So uh, you just spoke out. I am sure this question will be there in a couple of folks. Mind. So it's highly, it's highly encouraged. Okay, and that's precisely what I'm coming for face to face. So yeah, so you must have heard, heard a lot of these words around it, right? I mean, at least from uh, this world, data science is there, then you see machine learning is there, then you have data analysis is there, then you see AI is there. Basically, what is what? Okay, and, and you have deep learning as well now, right? Basically, what is what? AI is the first word that I would like to explain. AI is a big bucket. Okay, big a big bucket, and mostly industry talks about AI. Research talks about AI. Understood, right? AI is cannot be a course. Right? I mean, we have a course along AI, but AI is uh, yeah, there is shape here, so. <laughs> okay, so AI is like entire bucket. Okay, so here yeah, when you say when you Google, I mean, a lot of like you, for example, you'll have this Google dot AI. Right, there these are the Google's AI venture. You'll see this side. This is Google's AI bucket. That is why industry talks about AI. Hmm. So AI, we have an AI course, but AI is big bucket. Everything is under AI, right? You read right from any anything to do with creating, which can uh, uh, you know, which can uh, create intelligence, right? Make your life easy. That is AI for industry, right? But when when it comes to learning the content, so the learning content is known as data science. Okay, and data science is not today's word. It is like you know, people from mathematical background. They all uh, have been doing data science. This means getting the understanding the science behind the data. That involves basically understanding what is the data pattern, what is the data analysis, what is the data, uh, you know, what is the trend of data, and all that. This comes under data science. Okay, and data science is actually a course. Okay, where inside data science you learn about machine learning. Inside data science you learn about data processing. Inside data science. You learn about the big data, right? It's it's a course actually. It's a two-year master degree course. Okay, so of course for us that is not possible. So we have a stripped-down version of data science. We try to cover as much as required as much as science. Then you come to machine learning. Machine learning means uh, you know to, to to understand what is machine learning. You're trying to create a system which can learn from data. For example, how did you learn uh, identifying a cat versus dog? Right? How how do you how did you learn identifying a cat versus dog? The hmm? the way it looks. It's first time, first time. But taught me exactly. Your parents would have told you this is cat that is dog, right? Okay, so and that's all they told you. They didn't tell you a cat would measure this much, a cat will fluff it here. Nobody told you that. What happened? Your brain actually created the logic there. Okay. So you, what you're trying to do using machine learning is you're trying to create softwares which can do the logic that you did in your mind. That is machine learning. Okay, now you take any example. Like, you know, self-driving cars, you're training a car how to drive it by itself. 
based on previous data, based on experience. Chatbot, you're trying to replace somebody who is taking care of customer relationship. Right? So that, that's what that's what is your machine learning. Deep learning is now is a branch of machine learning, okay, where your it is trying to deal with unstructured complex data. Okay, so as we go with machine learning and realize, okay, these are the things that you cannot do with this, right? And these are the things that you can possibly do with deep learning. So deep learning can solve things like, you know, uh, like today, not today, uh, to, yeah, today only we are doing face recognition, right? Okay, and uh, to certain extent, uh, you know, your machine learning did that, but with, with you know, certain amount of failures, you want to take it to the next level, like, you know, uh, you remember, we you know in Facebook, you have seen this uh, face and automatically identify who that person is. There is known as deep face. This is based on deep learning. Okay, because even from a side view, you can understand who is that person. Right? This was not possible with machine learning earlier. Right? Five years back, this was not possible. Right? We live in a world where everything is taken care of, but you know, there are a lot of things that has happened uh, in the meantime. So that is, this is around deep learning. Okay, there will be a lot of terms that will data analysis. Data analysis is nothing but you know doing the analysis of the data. Okay, preparing, understanding the data, creating a user journey out of the data. Right, got a sense of these components, right? So, what does NumPy do? do I mean, for any webs, any company, you'll see AI dot something, AI dot Amazon, AI dot Microsoft. You'll find. You know, these are Google's. These are the things that Google are trying to do with respect to AI. So, why do the data things work in the market? We do have this data analytics in last. Then you have data mining, data variance, we have interactive design right, right. So, when this virus can't integrate that with AI, and then we all fall in the good mark for this. Right. Of course, of course, there are a lot of reasons. So, definitely, this is an extensively researched work. We have seen 30, 40, 40, whatever we have linear regression that we study. This is a work of 30 years back, easily. 30 years back, I mean, none of the other technologies match that, right? But years back, it's say it's an era change, right? But these things were done then. But what was the thing, right? That time, computation was not accessible to everybody. Okay, uh, as a business case, right? You, 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 you those, I mean, computation was not accessible uh, to business. Bec uh, sorry, to to individuals. Now only we have this cloud and all come into picture, right? Cloud. Earlier, computer high-end computation was available only for research folks by universities, isn't it? If you want to learn or do some experiments, those things were not available to them. Okay, these were limiting the, you know, crowd absorbing the technology. Without crowd absorbing the technology, do you think companies can do anything out of it? Nothing, right? Because nobody knows it. You, know, you have the technology, yeah, what will happen? Who will do the work? Right? So the most important thing is now that, you know, uh, learning uh, the, because of the cloud or other, you know, Fast system available to everybody. Uh, now people can actually use that to learn it. Once people learn it, automatically we see absorption becomes higher. The, from last one year, we have seen lot of startups in deep learning. That's because it has now it is now possible to do it. So basically, one reason for this is your uh, over last uh, decade people have learned the art of storing the data. That is known as data modeling. Okay, that is what people have done. When you say data analysis or you know, data engineering, people have learned the art of data modeling. So data one is data is modeled is in a stage where it can be consumed by a machine learning application, which need resources to execute it. Okay, that is, there is where your uh, uh, this guy, you know, your, your absorption. I mean, because of cheaper infrastructure, you can make use of that uh, the algorithms there and make some predictions out of it. Okay. So that's that's the that's the whole journey. So fundamentally everybody could learn it now. Okay, you needn't be a researcher to do it, do all the stuff. Okay. And uh, like I I for my work around I did this machine learning way back 2010 in C. Okay, it was very difficult that time. The libraries were not as easily uh, this the ease that we see and write code now, right? It was very difficult. There was this DLib library which was written in C, C++, and used to use that for doing network traffic, you know, spam prediction and all that. So it was difficult that time. We had to do it because there was some strong business case around. Okay, now 
you know, it, the barrier has reduced. You don't have to be a really mathematician or you know, you don't really have to carry a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know statistics baggage with you to understand these things. You can still do the, all these things. Right? The entry barrier has reduced. The computation barrier has reduced. It, it just became more adoptable. I think that's all. Really So, and uh, all the study materials for the initial chapters and code can be found here. So, it's for community.zclabs.com. Okay. So, you can see here the essential numpy. Okay, please bookmark this page. Okay, so let's understand what is NumPy. So remember, entire so Python, as you already know, is a very easy to use programming language. But understand one thing: this machine learning libraries, everything is written using C or C plus plus. That's precisely because all these are very computation intensive. You cannot rely on Python for computation. You rely on Python for uh, you know, uh, you know, code interopping. You can interact with Python code very easily, mm -hmm. right? Connecting various code using the APIs, wrappers, and all that. You can do all these things with Python easily compared to your C C plus plus. But internally, most of these libraries are written in C C plus plus. Okay, and NumPy is a very uh, NumPy is a low level library which is used by machine learning libraries of Python. There is a second one. So NumPy is the first uh, machine learning library that will do that. Okay, first library that will do that. NumPy. So it is implemented using C. It is like uh, you know, you, in in everybody remembers array, mm. array. In C array, every is everybody familiar with C. Mm. Some of you are, <coughs> right? C array means what? If you create an integer array of C, it means all the data type will be of same. All the data will be of same type, isn't it? Mm. That is your C array, right? So so is NumPy. NumPy is internally like n-dimensional C array. Okay, so n dimensional C array. So, like similar to C, this is also homogeneous in nature. Okay, homogeneous means this is all of same type. So, let's write certain code around it. There so, no array list, huh? there is no array list, it's like static array. C has static array, right? you cannot change the size on the fly and all that. This is also the same. Num5. Hmm. How do you import this library? You, if you have already installed, or in future, you can continue writing code with me. Okay. Import NumPy as NP. What are you doing? You're trying to import this library, right? So let's understand one by one each of the feature. So what are you doing here? You're creating a NumPy array. What is the, far? so you can see np.array. np.array means you're creating a NumPy array. Okay. And what are you passing inside? You're passing passing a Python list, isn't it? Right? So what, what is it that it will return? It will return a NumPy array to the list. Okay, you are returning a NumPy array from a list. NumPy is the namespace. Hmm? NumPy is the alias. Yes. Okay. And uh, what are you doing? An NP array is returning a NumPy array out of this. Of course, of course. Um, all those things are uh, valid. I mean, you know, okay, so you can store it in a variable. Okay, if you do a dot, right, dot tab, it will give you all these functionalities here. 
right okay this is this is the first page where you are what are you doing you are creating a numpy array understood right now the questions that you would have been what is the difference between list and array isn't it i could have done like this also like list this is also fine right yes. a and l both contains the same same information right just that one is list one is numpy array so now the important difference between numpy array and list is array is much more faster than list numpy array is much more faster than list hmm? it's because the way it is stored i'll show you okay this is i mean folks who are planning for interviews this is something uh, you can expect is the first question if you don't say it right then it might be the last question <laughs> okay so it is that important so let's see okay so numpy array okay so this is say your numpy array how many elements it has it has five elements one two Four, five, right? This is the numpy array. But what a list! It is a direct data structure. That means data is contained within the memory, right? If you are accessing third element, you do this. This is say this is a is equal to this. You pass it a one. You will directly access this data. Got it, right? Whereas in list, it is actually like this. Remember, list can list is a heterogeneous data structure, right? Yes. It can contain different type of data. How does it provide this flexibility? It provides this flexibility by storing data as a reference. This is a reference. This is the A stored here. This is one stored here. This is stored here, and so on. Got it, right? So whenever you're trying to access this memory. Like you do L, if you do one, it will try to access this first. From there, it will again go here, isn't it? So you can imagine two-way access, two-step access, right? So which which is faster, this guy or this guy, A or L? A is faster, right? Your numpy is faster. Understood? Why numpy is faster? Because of the way it is stored. First thing, and also numpy provides fast mathematical computation uh, library. Okay. Fast mathematical computation, like you know, if you want to do things like this, suppose you have b is equal to right. If you do a plus b, okay. So what happens in num? What happens in numpy is it actually do okay. It actually We'll do element plus element by element addition. Understood? It will actually do element by element operation. Got it, right? It will do element by element operation. Okay. Huh? A plus B. Okay, A is one, two, three, four, five. Mm. Three, 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 three. So the addition will be like this. Huh? Okay. Okay. Addition. Size is not same. Size is not same. Then this operation is not valid. Okay. I will come to that regarding size is not valid. But understood. One question. For example, if you are adding two variables, obviously it is adding your value. Mm. But we are storing that value anywhere. Ah, it is just dumping it here. That's okay. it. If you want to store, you will use b is equal to a plus b. Okay. No problem. But it won't be any problem. We can do it in different languages also. I mean, yeah, it's just not storing it. That's it. That means nothing. It's as good as not doing anything, right? So these are regarding the. So what is it? I tell you, array in, in uh, numpy is n-dimensional for a C array. N-dimensional. That means you can create as many as like you know. Uh, 
What is this? This is a two dimensional array, isn't it? You can create three dimensional array also. I can, I'll do that. It's an n dimensional array. It's not only that, it, you can store strings also here. MP dot. You can store strings also here. Right? No, it will convert the numeric to string because it has to maintain the homogeneity in the data, right? Data should be of same type. Understood, right? So let's let's get further. You rather like you know earlier stuff, you have this you have these functions here, np zeros. Many times you need zero initialized arrays, right? You mentioned here np zeros and you mentioned the three cross four cross three cross four. It will create a matrix of three plus four with all values zeros. Make sense? Three, three rows, four, four columns. columns. Right? Three rows, four columns. Because and zero. Hmm? Because, no, no, no. We, because we are giving zeros. Okay, if you want to create, you can see D type is equal to int. That means it will create all the data in type as integer. Okay. NP once you have. Let me know if I'm going a little too fast. Okay. Two cross five. If you give it, so it is all once. Got it, right? So you have to create and you don't have to write a loop or looping through all elements and all that. You directly do it. Okay. But you're not specifying one or two. Let me type uh, the one you have done in zeros. Hmm. Okay, one sorry. This is what you were saying, right? Right, right. Because naturally, after that question, this question comes. <laughs> okay, so here, what you are doing? You are again. You can write a text also here. You give the size here. You give the value here. Like that, second row will be different. Oh, you can overwrite. Like, you know, you can store this value here. Got it, right? Okay, clear so far? One thing before. So this is all you um, are executing in C. Uh, sorry, here in Python. Ah, this is Python code. Python code. Mm -hmm. You are not printing or anything. Uh -huh. that's benefit of using this interactive environment. Okay. You don't have to write print every now and then. I mean, what? Whenever you have an object, you can directly understand what it is and you print it. So many uh, random number. You know what is a random number? Everybody. Yeah. Random number is you know some. Uh, how important is a random number? Any ideas? Where? Oh, I read RSA based stuff and any any other places. Where you Sometimes can... you need to generate uh, like data sets. Mm, yeah, plot trees, right? So random number is very very important. Okay, so here is a library to generate random numbers, and you have a lot of techniques. Of you can see these are different techniques of generating random numbers. Got it, right? You don't have to get learn all this, but definitely need to learn the important ones. If you do rand int, this is the starting point. Like you want to generate random number between one to ten, and what is the size of contents you want to generate random number equals to. It is generating numbers between 1 to 10. Between 1 to 10 means 10 is exclusive and 1 is inclusive. Right. Something like range. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Understood ran random integer. Yeah. Similarly, you have anything. And every time you execute, it will give me different, different output. Huh? If you want to maintain this, you have another technique of seed. Right. I will show that later.
So if you do this rand, it is generating a random number between 0 and 1. Right here, if you mention 2 cross 2, it will generate a 2 cross 2 matrix. Values are between 0 and 1. Understood, right? Two cross two are given, right? Oh, this argument is not required because that's the only argument here. Those columns. If you mention it like this, what is this? You have seen Rubik's cube. Rubik's cube has how many entities? Hey. Three, three, two, two, three, two, three, right? Twenty-seven. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. Twenty-seven. You can imagine this, right? And uh, uh, today only you will ask me a question: How do we imagine fourth dimension? Okay, I'm not telling you to see inception and all that, but uh, yeah, you cannot imagine fourth dimension. Three is the one that you can imagine. Beyond this, everything is hyperplane. Hyperplane. That means you cannot imagine. Okay, but th this is the max thing that a Rubik's cube is a good example. We, we humans are only capable of, uh, you know, understanding three dimensional stuff. Then that's very close. But when you are doing machine learning, it will deal with one million dimension. Is a common thing. Okay, one million dimension. So let's we'll get there later. Hmm. Okay, so here let's see. Understood, right? Random. Next is you want to generate sequence of numbers. So you have. Lens space, lens space 0 to 10, 0 to 1, 10 numbers. What does it mean? It will generate, uh, you know, actually, if you do 11, hmm. what is it doing? It is generating 11 numbers between 0 and 1. Understood? Right, you can see, and all these numbers are equally separated. Okay, so lens space, it's very useful. We'll use it. Okay, link space means it is generating 11 numbers between 0 and 1. All the numbers you can see, the distance between them is same. Point 0.1 is the distance between. Is it clear? Link space. Okay. Now I'll put it in a, this number a random array into a B. Right. Now I want to see the shape related. Understood? These are like generating numbers on these techniques. Now I want to see, see the shape and all that. So if you do a D dot shape, it will give you the shape information. Right? Three comma three comma three. This is the shape information. Okay, so don't worry. I mean, uh, all this uh, stuff is actually mentioned in here. Okay, so I'm I'm still in uh, you know creation part, initialization part. So the idea is to today to this point broadcasting every day. Okay, there are something which you, which is mentioned here and which you won't be doing. The reason is the reason reading assignment also. Ten percent of this. Okay, so D shape, understood what is shape? Shape is an end. So you have, apart from that, you have D dot ending. Ending is number of dimension. Okay, this is the three dimension figure. So ending is number of dimension. And the third thing is, D dot. Size. It will give you what is the total number of elements. Understood? The difference is shape, shape, size, and ending. These three are the dimension to see dimension. Right? We we'll learned very soon to change the dimension and all that. Okay, but prior to that, let me show some other things. So, what is the shape? Um... Like, um, like, like, right? Hmm. Something like that? Not like that. It's a dimension of it. It was 3 cross 3 cross 3, right? 
Okay, now let's see. You have this data. You want to access first row. Rather, you have this data. A is equal to N P length space zero to one. And how many data you want? Twenty. So you have this A and this is the content that is generated now, right? So if you have to access the first element, how do you do? This is very similar to your list. A0 means first row, isn't it? And we want to access this element. Understood, right? If you want to alter it, you can because this is mutable. Cool? You want to access this first row All right you are accessing first row here okay you want to access first to what will happen like this yeah first and second row isn't it also you want to access first and second column understood what happened mm -hmm. how do you get this so this is basically okay this one into three is okay this is row this is column number zero column number one column number two column number three column number four column number five one into three means three is exclusive one and two column so it returns you like this understood Hmm? Then in the second argument, you have one colon three. One colon three means, right? That's why you're getting this eight nine seven one. Got it, right? Eight nine seven one. Second is three, one is two, three. Hmm. Right, three is always excluded. Remember this. The last number is always excluded. You can have also like the minus one. Huh? I don't want the last column. Can I get a minus one? Minus one means uh, that uh, you can start from the yeah. uh, last column. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. so I'll just show it. So if you replace here by minus two, sorry, minus two to colon. What is it, right? Minus two is this one. 3, 3, minus 2 is this one and it starts with 3, 7, so minus 2 is this one, 3, is, minus 1 is last one, right? Then this is minus 2, understood, right? Okay, now we'll do a small, I think your installation is not complete. Going on. So if your installation is going on, that is definitely not the excuse because I have some alternate solutions. Okay, just try. Uh, the, uh, the idea is to there is some cloud based solution which you can use if things are not working. Okay, nothing like that. otherwise. So you can use this jupyter.org.di. Okay, it's a cloud based Jupyter. So, what you do is you create an uh, using API so far, right? Create a matrix of 7 cross 10. Okay, 
get me the middle layer and then five cross five and get me the middle two cross two area. Two. Two goes two or three goes three. Of random. Of random.
So, I mean, the good part about this is most of the offices you can open it. I know, you know, you uh, there are times in office where you really want to practice the stuff and uh, installation might not be available. So, this will help you in those moments. You can practice all this stuff from your office. Uh, our company has given like uh, uh, you can install. Huh? Like, um, like on that. Oh, that's great. Then they and uh, trust me, when I go to pantry and while coming back, uh, most of the people will be reading Python or doing something on that. Nice, nice, nice. They are doing actually. They are doing. Uh, it's 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 the time to do. <laughs> yes. Right. You'll be doing. I'll be doing something else. So they will be all. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, that's a correct Jupyter notebook here. Jupyter space notebook, it will work. Okay, so let me create one uh, MP. Thank you. 
Okay, so this is the data. I cross type, right? Is there shortcut to run that? Oh, shift enter. Okay, so if you want data. Right, that's the answer, isn't it? Let me here. One to four, one to four. Okay. Okay, now let's proceed further. So this was accessing part of it. Okay, now there are things like you know, if you want to, this is very important. If you want to join data, okay, join numpy, if you want to split it up. Okay. Many times you'll do splitting it up still is less, less common. Joining is very common operation. Okay. Uh, let's do this thing. So what do you want to do? You have this data here, right? You have this data here. What you want to do is you want to combine data horizontally. Okay. Uh, folks. So we, what you want to do is you want to combine data lines horizontally. You have, you have, this is, you have, you have, this is, oh, sorry, you have this as one data. You want to put the, keep the same data or of course any any data with different size but you know the height should be same when you're combining horizontally height should be same isn't it okay so if this data is say five cross five this data also should be five cross ten of course or five plus five or anything but this should be same for that okay so for that you can <coughs> you have to use the function np dot concatenate concat data comma data right so you can see uh, by default it is putting it on top of one another vertical concatenation if you want to do horizontal concatenation axis This is horizontal concatenation. Okay, so two things here. One is uh, if you don't mention this excess, okay, it is it means excess is equal to zero. By default, excess is equal to zero. Right, by default, x is equal to zero. Now, okay, uh, this is this is x is equal to zero. Now, uh, uh, and x is zero means x is zero means this is your x is zero. This is your x is zero. This is your x is one. I'll explain this now. Mm. Okay, understand this. So what we have so far, we have this data, right? This is the data input data that we have, right? And we, when we mention x is zero, x is zero means vertically sitting on one of one another, right? So x is zero is vertical excess. How to remember it? Just remember reverse. How do you write one? You write one this way, right? Huh? This is straight is one. So your horizontal axis is one. It's counterintuitive, right? So zero is vertical axis. Remember this. You use this throughout in pandas and number. So when you mention x is equal to one, it will jump. Uh, it will merge things horizontally. When you mention x is equal to zero, or you don't mention, it will zoom uh, vertically. That's why. Right, uh, mm. Right. In this way. In this way, right? So it will it will do that as long as right. So uh, it, it, it not only two, you can combine three also, right? It will do as long as all of them have same number of rows. Understood? Right? Mm -hmm. 
other and this is horizontal axis this is vertical axis clear competition now we will see splitting splitting means breaking the splitting by the data means, uh, huh? by default ah, by default it is what i mean the, the other api for this is this horizontal is edge stacking this is similar to previous eh? here you don't have to mention those other things or you can do this But print and shift enter won't work. Print, ah. you have to write it separately. Yeah. And all those things. Yeah. All this code will execute it. Will execute. I, I, I mean, I can execute in my Linux shell also. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So the next, then this example they have given this uh, hardware to learn Python. Ah, uh, which one? This the next then, example. They have to configure and uh, like execute. So, oh, acha 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 acha. So it is being used. Right, right. That's the hard way of working it. <laughs> right, but uh, in production, you will use those environment. Yes. yes. Okay, so this is uh, V stack, V stack and H stack. I think it's clear to everybody, right? Now we'll see splitting the data. We have learned joining them. Now you should be seeing how to break it down. And P dot V split data. Third point, right? So what you are doing? You are doing a vertical split. Got it, right? Vertical split means okay. So V split what? V split means V split is V split by what is what does the term V split means? Under please note here, huh? this is some point people get confused. V split. V split means splitting the vertical axis. This is the vertical axis, right? Yes. So what is splitting the vertical axis means? You split it mean like this, like this, right? V split doesn't mean splitting vertically. It means splitting the vertical axis. So this is how it looks. So here, when you mention three, what it is doing? This is the this is the data, right? It will five cross five is there, right? Okay, it will divide it data here. Understood, right? So that is why it will return you to outcome. A comma B. Okay, A, you see this? Understood. So it is splitting the vertical axis. Is it clear? Similarly, you have H split. It is splitting the horizontal axis. Right? Remember, this is returning two to data at a time. So, you know, you can write this A comma B. The A is this. B is this. Is it clear to everybody? Hmm. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, there are more good things you understood. Creating, uh, I mean, initializing, creating, um, accessing, uh, so joining, splitting, right? Okay, let's see more. Everybody's comfortable with it, right? So far, those are pretty basic stuff. Okay, so now say you have this array. Okay, so you have this A and what you want to do is Okay, okay you directly have these APIs. Okay, and you have a lot of them. For example, you have this max Got it, right? Okay, how do you know all of them? Just put A dot tab and get lost. Okay, it's huge list of APIs. Uh, press dot and the tab. Right? Oh, it's a little slow then. Okay, then you have this. Let me understand. Explain a few of them, if not all. So if you put A, then you have this arc max. Arc, so all the APIs which has this arc word in it, right? It means uh, it means that you know uh, it, what you have to do, it will return the index. Okay, you have it index here. Is it clear? Four index. That means in this data, which is the which index has highest value? Eight, right? One, two, three, four. Understood? Eight is the highest, right? So one, two, three, four. That is why arc max will give you four. Okay, so it also follows that zero starting from zero. Right. Okay. See, we have this matrix D, right? If we want to find along. This is very important operation that I'm showing now. You use it very often. You will have n-dimensional matrix from the n-dimensional matrix. This is two dimension. N-dimension. Okay, from there you have to find highest value value across third dimension. Okay, so this operations is important. So D dot, okay, a D dot R max. Sorry, R max. What will this return? This is anyway returning here. X is. Okay, so what is this D? This is this is what is X is one. Uh, horizontal, right? So, what is this returning? This is returning highest value across each horizontal. What is the highest index of highest value across this row? Huh? Across this row, the, this is the highest value, right? Right here, this is the highest value, right? So, 3, 2, 0, 0, isn't it? That's the answer, isn't it here? Okay, if you change this axis from 0 to 1 to 0, you'll get along the vertical axis. Okay, write this code. These are 
these are all the in uh, indexes. Right, right. We need to print the subsequent uh, numbers, or it is not like which is the. Oh, therefore that you have. To, if you want that, yeah. you will just not use R gear. Okay, just max. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, 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 right, right. And many times you need the index numbers actually, so that you can use that for other in fetching other information. Mm -hmm. So these part, right? It might not seem very interesting now. Mm -hmm. Okay, it happens, right? Because you have kind of number matrix and all that. It might not be something you are expecting. But these are like you know, these are enabling you to do very low level stuffs. When you actually do other things, and you know. I can quickly do it and you will say, ha, this is where it is useful. Okay, I won't have to go there and explain all these things. So, uh, a lot of these, like 30 to 40 percent things, will fall in this category where it might not be making sense at that point of time. Okay, you just have to take that with that pinch of salt and believe it that in future it will stop, it will start connecting. Okay, a lot of in, in machine learning area, especially, there will be a lot of these things that will be coming here. Um, one again, very generic question. See, since you might be doing this very frequently, so you know okay, what are the arguments you pass, what uh, which function, uh, like what is the arguments you pass. So for us, like forget about us. For me, like uh, very new to this uh, thing, so I have to remember. Or is you already gave the answer, right? <laughs> you already hear that's the only shortcuts. Right. Even now, also, you know, a lot of things I have done million times, still I'll so you just forget. I mean, it's it's that's what it is, right? That's okay. You know where the things is. You go in documentation, think that is very nice. So you continue doing it. That's why the important thing in this entire journey is to do it. I mean, that's what I mean. We, after this phase, there will be lot of I'll, I'll i'll be introducing you to the kaggle how to solve problems there how to solve problems basically continue doing that do that for six months eight months one year and you will see you know the curve hitting exponential you know it's margins okay so got it right so so far hmm. so of course you have all those np dot sign it will give it will return you sign function of all this data Right, and the sign. Okay. Can you tell me this is something you know uh, in, in, in exams and all we have this logical aptitude things right this is one of those questions can you tell me what if you see i i, I mean just as a fun because these things are fun actually so if you see this data like this how can i generate this out what could this function possibly don't check the documentation okay and in fact i haven't told you how to check also that's the <laughs> i'll tell it after this okay say you see this code okay uh, try inferring it. How? Uh, right, right, right. So one is this three is coming from there. Two, two, minutes. four is coming from three is again. Five is coming here again. Three is repeating. Right. Good people who are thinking about it. So you know, believe in your what do you call this intuition. Start believing it. Okay. It will take you to the right direction because people who have developed this also had the same intuition. Just that we stop believing it. We stop, we get into the habit of checking the documentation first. So, you know, we start believing that. You know, this helps. This will expedite your learning process. Right? You Many things you will see, so let me guess what is happening, then check it. Okay, so over a period of time, you start building confidence. Right? These are like simple things that worked out. Okay, you start believing confidence, you start having confidence of your intuition. You know, then your intuition actually will take you a little more further. Do that. Understood everybody? These are the indexes. So if you have some data, you know, this is very important example. Say I have only data like, you know, you want to create data 
of ra a random collection of A's and B's. Hmm. So, MP random random Right? Everybody understood what will happen here? What will be the output? Okay, these are indexes, right? As you guys mentioned, indexes. And what will be the value of this? This will be some sequence of zeros and ones, isn't it? Okay, and this is very important case again. From small data set, you are generating data. Some random sequence of data. Only A and B. Ah, A and B. From there, it is generating a sequence of A and B. Zero to four. Right. The size of ten means total are the size. Right. Make it more complex. Let's give zero comma one besides ten. Ah, then it will generate only zero because uh, two is the. Uh, Okay, uh, now uh, I'll be just talking about what we'll be discussing about this later on as well. So, okay, so what is a vector? Mm, scalar and vector. Something which has magnitude and direction. Huh? Yeah, something which has magnitude and direction indeed. Okay, so you know, in, in, in data science world, okay. Uh, what you what you see here is okay. Uh, this is something known as row vector or by default vector. Vector means some collection. Every data. Okay. You when I say this line, understand with a uh, contextual perspective that you know if if I say this, every data is represented as a vector. This is the first line in machine learning. The first line in every data is represented by a vector. Vector means what? Vector. See text just. As a pre, as a as a information here, so you your text data and all cannot be processed directly. Those all needs to be converted into vectors so that you can process it. machine learning algorithms understand only numbers, right? So no matter what your data is, you have to convert that into vector like this. Vector like this will be five comma seven comma eight comma two it can be of any numbers. But this is with each column. This is one. This is one vector. This is another vector, right? Three, two, one, five. Right. Each column means one feature, one type of information. Don't worry. I mean, this will we'll discuss a lot of. Uh, I mean, this these things in details. Each column means a feature here. This is one feature. This is one feature. This is one feature, right? And this is a value for that. Like you know, if you imagine the data, how do you have you guys seen CSV files? Yes. CSV files you have seen, okay. CSV files will have header column names, isn't it? Yes. So here, say age is there, here gender is there, here income is there, here location is there, here uh, here uh, uh, grade. Huh? Yeah. grade, grade is grade. there. Mm. Mm. Okay, and there will be some values, right? Age thirty nine. That's not my age. Male. Uh, something, 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 right? You uh, see, this is text data. You cannot use text for. So, what will you do eventually? Just understand this line. This each row, right? You'll convert that into a vector. Where don't ask this question now. How to convert the text into number? But there are a lot of libraries. We'll be learning it later. How to convert text into numbers and all that. 
Okay, but eventually this row will be converted to something like this. 32, comma, 1, comma, 10. Got it, right? This is known as a feature vector. Okay, so this is vector. So NumPy, as you will see now, will actually, if I write a NumPy, you can call this as vector also. If you read any books and all, they will keep mentioning this same vector, vector, and they will know, never explain where is vector. Okay. If you do this. So this is nothing but you are creating a vector here. Got it, right? You remember we had this vector calculus, vector operations in school. Okay, so you create another array. And P array five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Okay. So remember we have two vectors. A is one vector. B is another vector. Right. Okay. What is the shape of A and B? Four comma. Okay. What do we what is what do you have here? This is this is A and this is B. This is the shape of it. Okay, so this is the shape of it, a dot shape, four comma. So now a very uh, important operation is reshaping the data, right? So what you have learned is we have learned what is vectors now. If you want to do the vector addition, you have to make sure that both the vectors have same size, right? Tomorrow we'll understand what is broadcasting and how to deal with vectors of different size. Okay, that we'll learn tomorrow. But today what we'll see, we'll understand reshaping now. It's also very important data to understand all these machine learning algorithms are very rigid with what is the data format they can consume. These are algorithms, right? These are these have pretty much okay. You, you should give me data in this format only. Okay, so you might have to reshape your data so that your machine learning algorithms can consume the data to give the prediction for you. Suppose you have a matrix which looks like this. Okay, so you have this A which is like this and uh, okay, so this is your 6 plus 6 matrix. You want to convert this into one dimensional data. Okay, what you can do is reshape. Okay, reshape. Uh, suppose you want to convert this into data with only one column. Okay, you want to convert. So how? what is the total number of element? 36 rows and one column. Got it, right? Hmm? But I hate this co way of writing it. Okay, I want one column, right? I want it to derive the number rows by itself. Just write minus one. Okay, so you want two columns. You want to convert this data into two columns and you want it to derive the number of number of rows. Understood? See? Right? You want to convert this data into reshape. Okay, three rows. What's minus one? Minus one means derive the number of rows, derive the number of columns. Because there is only one possible value here, right? Mm -hmm. It will derive it. It, it will divide total number of data by this value and that will be coming up here. It will come to zeros. Mm -hmm. So minus one is something dumb. No, 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 no. Minus one is you are telling here, telling uh, you know numpy telling this to derive the number of rows by itself. Okay, so you can of course write three comma two L total. 
right but you you have to do the maps manually you're just offloading this task to the library <laughs> Hmm? No, you cannot. The size should be same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understood. What is reshape? Many a times you will do this reshape. Okay. There is one more thing. Uh, say you have a very simple array. What is the dimension of it? One dimension, right? You say you want to add one more dimension here. What you did? You added one dimension. What did I? You understood, right? If I do shape of it, it will be three cross one. Earlier, what was my shape? What is my shape? Three. I just did this reshape minus one comma one. It increased one dimension here. Is it fine? Now it is becoming a little confusing, right? Okay. So uh, one thing, if you have this is this is what is the dimension of this? Its dimension is three, right? One dimensional array. You want to add one more dimension to that. What does it mean? From one dimensional array, you are adding it width also. That you can do by calling this function reshape. Got it, right? Also, you can add one more dimension. See, it's getting more inside brackets. Okay, it becomes difficult to imagine from here, but as you should just understand, you're adding more dimension to that. It will be required tomorrow when you understand broadcasting. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, so. Just to practice the yeah, yeah, so just get a have feel of it, understand the thing so that when you go home and I think I've shown you the so tomorrow the topic I will start with broadcasting that is a little difficult topic and generally I don't do both of them in the same session because we started with NumPy if not finished broadcasting so that it is little bit. I would encourage all of you to uh, you know solve some I mean at least write few code seeing in the community okay some code kind of exercises there are some assignments which i'll be sharing tomorrow okay so just uh, touch base on these concepts basically okay so that uh, make sure the installation is still going on to write that path on them you install it again oh, this um python i have installed but python i need to remove Hmm? I have to the no, no, I'll tell you. That's okay. I mean, uh, just remove it from the path, or that's okay. I and mean, as long as you are aware of it, that you know. Uh, and I, so, and I don't know, we don't have this any path. Uh, it will automatically add it. Just check in your environmental path. Okay, just if you ever face any problem, just check for the path. Don't waste a lot of time. Uh, you didn't, you didn't actually, just that make sure you don't use it for installing packages. Uh, you will copy the URL and open it in the browser. We are already did it, no? Oh, you didn't do here. This is online. Oh, it's open it in the browser. Local host, whatever port is open, right? See, here I was at the same time. Local host. 
Uh, hi Niranjan, uh, I think you joined pretty late, right? Uh, yeah, I have, I think, recorded it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Niranjan. You can type here, say, I think there is some noise in your area. tomorrow same time 3.30 right? Right, right, right. Okay. Also I can see uh, that you have recorded this session so please send it after the okay. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Thanks, bye. Bye. Okay, Nilanjan will uh, mail the recording. Okay. Any questions anybody? Python is enough. More is better, of course, but Python is definitely enough. Doing anything or you know trying some stuff or some job perspective. If you, oh no, no, you should have Jupyter because uh, you anyway install Anaconda, Jupyter comes along with it. Ah, that's precisely you have executed separately. So when you do reshape, it will not modify A. Okay, you have to store it in another variable. Okay. Maybe B. Understood, right? Mm -hmm. Then you do B dot shape.
Uh, see, uh, from jobs and all this, see, six, I mean, you can, I mean, if you are comparing, comparing with uh, two years uh, master degree, you know, that is of course superior in terms of, uh, not, in, because we have had people who have who already did masters in US or Germany too, so not every college has good curriculum, please be warned about that. Okay, a lot of colleges, they give a lot of projects, but they, after going there, you are just, you will find yourself just finishing the project. Okay, so you should be very really judicious if you're selecting the university. Okay, of course, if there is to be a dedicated program, you put your heart and soul because you are putting a lot of money. If that is the only thing you are doing those two years. So of course, the ROI will be more. Got it, right? Okay, so there is say so not remember all all university programs are not that great. You will find a lot of them outdated also. Okay, a lot of courses where the professor will give you uh, you know the code and ask you to uh, debug it and run it and uh, that's that's very really important. A lot of colleges are good. Okay, it is from and but no, no matter what you do, if you do a two-year master degree program, it's good for CD. No, no, I don't want to do any masters. Yeah, I'm just giving you. I mean, because it's a general. But we have to put six years when we have started. I mean, the effort it used to be, it will be same, same because there also you have to put that many many effort, I mean hours of effort. Here, just that you have to put that effort in shorter time. What it right? We put the same hours, like you know, but in shorter time. So what happens? The number of uh, like you are in the weekend matches. So weekend you can expect around five to six hours to be discussed on an average uh, over the weekend. And uh, what will happen is after going from here Saturday, you will be getting a lot of time to practice. Right. So two days of work. So you have to make sure you finish that one next two weeks. Okay. And. Uh, during the course, you just try to keep up with the pace, whatever we are discussing. But during the towards the end of it or after the course, try to do a lot of projects. Okay. Uh, if you have an option, if you're not working somewhere, make yourself available for free internships. Free internship, you are okay to work without paying. I'm telling you what has worked with previous folks, right? So a lot of company will be willing to experiment with you. Take that opportunity to build that experience. Put that in your CV that you know you have done that and do that. Okay, do that judiciously, do that, learn it because things are a little different when you work in environment production and stuff. Okay, once you once you're comfortable there, then you might look for jobs. But there is no alternative to that hands-on experience. Okay, so that keep that high because no matter where who will be hiring you, they will basically interview you with your Python skills, your coding skills, then your mathematical skills. Yeah. Okay. So make sure you you are good in these three benchmarks. So they will divide the rounds that way. And to and in the beginning itself, they'll give you some question and ask you to solve. So 90% of what's happened here. Okay. So if you're solving something to a great extent, okay, trying few things out, you still have better chances than anything else. Missing that will be uh, removed when you what you said. Uh, when you do a lot of uh, factors, huh. uh, there is no alternative to that. That's why I'm saying in number of hours, no matter in two years, three months, six months, everywhere it is same. But if you're doing three months, the time will be the same. Probably the center day would be covered in 20 days course. In ah, days. right, right, right. Yeah. In Mumbai, right, you see, uh, it's a huge. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So, what I try to do is I, rather than giving all the noise around, okay, I'll tell you what precisely is required. What precisely is important, and you realize you are solving eighty percent of your work over here. Plus twenty percent, of course, you have to use uh, you know documentation, do the lot, the learning this. Okay, so that, that's what happens. You haven't hardly started. <laughs> <laughs> so keep yourself. Uh, don't plan any vacation for six to seven weeks. Generally, six to six weeks for us. Yeah, but sometimes you know. Being human situation, maybe take some holiday or. No, I have to book my tickets. I am constantly Okay, okay, okay. So, <coughs> so plan six after yes. seven weeks. Take two months as a upper cut. Okay, after that, there is some doubts and all that. Two months as upper cut. If, if something is not completed, then I think completing it is online. 
Nirajan, if you have installed, uh, you have downloaded an account, you just click on the Windows icon if you are installed in Windows, if you are in Windows. Right. Yeah, Niranjan, so you what you can do is uh, just go to Anaconda download, click on the uh, I don't know why it's a little slow. It's, uh, yeah. Just click on the the click here, either when Windows. Okay. And it will go to the bottom of the page. Click on the download. Okay. So now we're ending it here. After the recording is done, I'll send it to all uh, send it to folks here. Uh, we'll take all the email IDs and all tomorrow. Please, uh, I'll come to the email ID phone number or WhatsApp group. We'll be taking that tomorrow. Weekly batch. Weekly batch. Now there is one, but it's which has some classes are done there. Anybody here who is weekday batch? Yeah, we actually were supposed to go to weekday batch. Oh, we just told us to cover just two days. So match up the weekdays. So let's see how much is being covered up tomorrow. I don't uh, want to. Yeah. I mean, that, that becomes a discuss my part. Okay, so is it not possible for you to continue the weekly batch or something? Um, for me, it's actually in the weekend. So I don't have interviews in the weekend. Not in the weekend, right? Yeah. So, like how, much, how many weeks have we covered for the week? The uh, I think uh, we'll cover tomorrow. We haven't started machine learning for them. If we cover tomorrow pandas and some part of statistics, then probably just next week you attend these two classes. Okay. Um, okay. Then you'll be good with it. Okay. But uh, you know, check it. Check it. Yeah, since you attend it, let me know because uh, if my way is still there, will be still some gap. Okay, I don't want you to have compromised learning experience. Okay. So just check it once. Okay, if there is nothing. If there is one hour, I can take it offline. Okay, it's more than that. But are you saying that one more batch is starting next week? It has already started. Okay, last week. Last week, I put their merged them with some other. So, we might be missing me of it. So, today was a project class, so that's okay. You can ask me to Yes, at that time. You know, we go for another week, actually. That's a good thing. Today, we have done it in the process and all. That you can cover in the next panel. Okay. Okay. So that. So anyway, come tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe we'll take a synopsis of what we've done in between them. Yeah. We'll try to learn well. And that's okay. Next week, uh, don't map that much. Next week, I can. So Monday we don't have to come to the weekday session. No, no, Monday we'll come. Monday we'll come. We have to come tomorrow also. Monday is morning. 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 Morning is eight to nine thirty. Is this place is there? Uh, or it's ten to three. Uh, I would recommend you to. We have some problems because the time duration is same. Okay. Okay. Just that. Numpy is that's it. No, no, there are a few things. Sir. So broadcasting is getting right. Broadcasting is coming. Numpy. Yeah, broadcasting time. Okay, what things you have to practice? Numpy, just whatever we have discussed today. Tomorrow, I'll tell you what to practice uh, for the rest of the week. Practice. Uh, the entire plan is there, so I'll show you tomorrow. So if you click here, it's in the GitHub, right? <coughs> This is the repository. So I'll give you assignments on all the present here. So today this community is our Z class, right? Just practice from here. So here if you click on Wiki. Mm. 
This is the same thing. Mm -hmm. For our regulations. Huh? For today's. For now, he is asking number seven. I would have given this tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's uh, check the computer command. So let's check with the boot commercial and in the environmental hardware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only have to move. I uh, uh, sorry, this uh, I the Oh, I spy so you can go here actually. Just make sure the path is added. You go to this power shell. Power shell the Windows power shell. Okay. Windows shell. Just here type in any folder that you have on this. This is another one. Here we can see that the power shell is so, if you are the environmental make sure that is anaconda so that you take Okay, so if I'm assuming it opens in browser no, 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 they are drag out of things. Tensor is more demanding tool now. Tensor? Tensor? More demanding tool. Ah, tensor flow. Yeah. Right, and we will be doing uh, tensor flow in deep learning part. Yeah.